to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Hallelujah. Take us to the king, Lord. Take me to the king. Hallelujah. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. And lay it down. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Please take me to the king. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn in pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone. To gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Take me to the king. Please take me. Take me to the king. Take me to the king. Oh God, we come before your presence, Lord. We're thankful to you, O oh God, that we can come because you are our King of kings and our Lord of lords. You are the great I am. You are the lover of our soul. You are the lily of the valley. You give us air to breathe. You give us a mind to think. And you gave us life today. God, we thank you and we praise you. We enter into your presence, God, with thanksgiving in our mouths and on our minds. We came on this first Sunday in this sixth month of this 2021st year to tell you, Lord, we love you. Lord, we honor you. Hey, God, we bless you. We could not possibly thank you enough for all of the wonderful things that you have done. You gave us salvation. You delivered us from our evil ways. You allowed us to be a part of the family of believers. We are the ambassadors of you, oh God. We thank you and we praise you. But now, God, we understand that everyone may not have Thanksgiving in their hearts or in their minds. We pray for the heaviness that people are in enduring. We pray, God, that something will happen in the worship experience today, maybe in the Sunday school, maybe in the singing, maybe in the prayer time, maybe in the preach word, maybe at the Lord's table. Lord, whatever portions of the worship experience, we pray that the burdens will be lifted, that the minds and the hearts would be renewed, restored, refreshed, that there will be a revival in someone's God mind who's been weary, who's been depressed, who's feeling low, whose bodies are maybe in pain, or they don't know which way to turn. We know you to be the heavy load sharer. We know you to be the company keeper. And we're asking you, God, that in this time that we come in agreement together, that we can move mountains out of the way. We can look and expect for miracles like none other, oh God, can do. No healing can be done unless you do it. No deliverance can be done unless you permit it. God, we thank you and we honor you. So for those who are in nursing homes, hospitals, hospice care, Lord, let a word go forward. Let them hear it and be glad again. Let them hear it and have faith to believe. Let them hear it and let the pain move out of the way, even if just for a little while. Let your mercies prevail, oh God. New mercies every morning. We thank you. We praise you. So now, Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our heart be found acceptable in your sight, oh God. Our strength, you're our redeemer. That's for all of 
of us, God. You are our strength, our redeemer, and the words of our mouths and what we meditate on, God, should allow us to be found faithful to your will and to your way. It's in Jesus' name we're looking for an experience in you. It's in Jesus' name we're putting down the weapons of warfare, hallelujah, guns and violence, and we're picking up the word, oh God. We're going to speak the word today so that all of the other enemies have to take flight because of your word has been spoken. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we believe in the people of God who believe God. Say amen and give God the praise and the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. We love you. Thank you. Oh God, we honor you, Lord. We thank you. We exalt your name today, God. It's amazing, isn't he amazing? Hallelujah. It's that amazing grace of God. How sweet the sound is saved a wretch. I can only speak for myself. Like me, I once was lost, but now, now, saints, I've been found. I was blind, and I don't mean glasses. I don't mean I needed to have these readers on. I was blind to my ways. I was blind to the things and the movement of God in my life. But now, 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 I see, and every now and again, I get sometimes overwhelmed with everything that's happening, but I know to whom much is given, much is required, and so I must remain, anybody want to remain steadfast and unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord and freed from worry. That's our Sunday school lesson, a nice segue for you, freed from worry. Is anybody maybe feeling overwhelmed with the worry and the cares of this world? It's one thing to be worried, saints, it's another thing to be concerned, and we're going to talk about that for just a few moments in the Sunday school lesson. I'm going to ask uh, Sister Nanette uh, to read the second half while I read the first half um, of Matthew chapter 6. So for those of you who are joining us this morning, first of all, welcome. Good morning. Come into the worship experience. And we're going to begin with Sunday school, a, br a brief overview of it. And I know some of you say, Elder, you don't do anything briefly for the word of God. You're right. Uh, but I am going to summarize it. And my timer is now set because it's 1012. I'm going to make it set for 1035. Be bear with me. Okay. Pray for me. Uh, but this is an exciting lesson whereby we want to make sure that we are freed from worry. Matthew chapter 6, if you have your book uh, for the Sunday school lesson, it's page 345. Uh, we're in a new unit. This is uh, the summer unit. We are out of the prophets. Uh, we're now in um, the new segment, and we are excited about the summer session, which is talking about the confident hope. Is anybody confident? Hallelujah. I'm confident in God. Every now and again, it gets tried. Trust me. It's going to get tried. Uh, your confidence, the enemy would want to try that confidence, but this whole segment and unit is about confident in hope, and it begins in Matthew chapter 6. Therefore, verse number 25 says, therefore, and every time you hear therefore, it means there's been a transition. I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? You can't grow yourself, right? And why take ye thought for raiment? Your clothes, what you're going to wear. Many of you have multiple options. You probably were at the closet saying, I don't know what I'm. Uh, and so take ye no thought for raiment. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And verse number 29, and yet I say unto you, get ready, Sister Nanette, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse number 30, please. Glory to God. Praise God. I apologize for that. Beginning with verse 30, it says, Wherefore, if God so cloth the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you of ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. 
For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Mm -hmm. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And verse 34 says, Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Sister Nanette, you can Amen. disable the phone line. It's not, oh, no. It's not working. Okay, it's all right. Go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for that reading. Seven reasons not to worry or in this particular reading. There are seven reasons not to worry. At least seven reasons not to worry. The first half of the segment that I read are the reasons or the things that Jesus is saying, don't do these things. Just, just don't do these things. And don't be concerned about these things. And don't worry about these things. And don't give any thought to these things. Because um, if we are to con be concerned about something, that's one thing. You could be concerned for your children. You could be concerned for your spouse. You could be concerned for the economics of this culture. You could be concerned for the homeless. Uh, please be concerned for the people in prison and uh, who, who are not following after the will of God. But don't be worried. Because worry will cause several things. One, it will cause us to fall back and not trust who God is and that God is in control over everything. Um, uh, so, and if, and if we say that God is in control, are we just saying it or do we really believe it? Whose rule are we under? We're under the rulership. We, call, we, said, we sang the song earlier, take me to the king. The king of the earth, not just the king, like some countries have kings that are overriding over one area. I'm talking about the king of glory, the one who has king rulership over everything. And so why are we worried when God is in control? And so Jesus is touching on the uh, uh, areas of sensitivity. Now, put in mind that the persons we're talking about at this time are farmers. Um, and they, they have much less than we do currently today. <laughs> if they were to be in our houses today, they would be overwhelmed with the supply that we have. They had, they were minimalist. They didn't have a lot many times because they traveled a lot. They didn't have a lot of things to hold on to. They didn't have such thing as hoarders possibly back in the day because it's just a different time. And it may be a simpler time even, uh, but God wants us to know that through this, reading and Jesus is saying that if the birds in verse number 25 don't have to think about where they're going to drink and or eat, if the birds are not out there pacing back and forth saying, oh, what am I going to do? Oh, whoa, it's me calling all their bird friends. And if the birds are being able to survive by who? The God who rules the birds, then we should not worry. Actually, one commentator says, consider worry as a curse. Because why? One, you're possibly losing sleep if you're worried. You may even be causing your body to respond to the worry. B blood pressure goes high, headaches, migraines. It, it can get in your muscles, cause you to have back and spasm, pack, you know, pains in your body. Uh, this worry is an overwhelming uh, sense of negativity that says it won't get any better, uh, or, or why is it this way, or, and not putting our trust into God. But if we are truly under God's rule, is anybody under God's rule? Just say yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Hubbard. Thank you, Sister Nanette. Subjects under God's rule are to pray that God's will be done. And if you love God and you know God loves you, then why fret, my pet? Why, 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 why worry? And, and, and I know some people say, well, that's why I got all these gray hairs. I don't think that's why I have all these gray hairs. I believe that my maturing state causes these gray hairs. And if God says even, or the scripture rather implies that there might be some wisdom them in this in this gray right here because of my experience with God so um if it in fact causes you to feel like you're worried then take that to God but I suspect even if you take it to God you still gonna have some gray hair possibly uh that's beside the point uh but the supply of the resources the, the 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 grace of God and the strength of God is in all that God has for us so again if the people of the day are talking about the food that they have to grow don't worry about the drought. I'm going to send provision, even if there is a drought. And to focus not on what is not there as much as focus on who's in control of what's not there. 
right? Uh, verse number 26, again, so the birds, we talked, I mean, excuse me, the, um, the, yeah, the, the eating and the drinking rather of the, um, of the body for us because the files of the air are provided for. Uh, now, again, a different time. They had limited provision. They only maybe had one pair of shoes or one sheath um, tunic because all everybody wore a tunic. Nobody had anything other than that. Uh, so th 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 it's limited, but they were worried more so about eating and having provision. And Jesus is saying, don't worry and be free from it. Anybody free? Say I'm free. Free because I'm not worried about it. Um, now, it also didn't mean for them to sit back and chill and do nothing and not work their crops. It just meant work your crops, uh, cultivate your storage, uh, do some canning and some, you know, what, preserving however you do that. Make provision. So that's for us today. Make provision. Don't just go out there and not get the job to get the money to get the food, but make provisions, but just don't be worried about it. So for those who may be experiencing under un, underemployment or unemployment, if we're trusting God, God could take a little. I wish I had a witness. I wish I would preach it right now. And he could stretch it and make it much. Because we're talking about the father of provision. Jesus is encouraging the people to stop worrying. And he assumed that if you're sowing, you're going to harvest. And if you're harvesting, you're storing, Right. And, 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 and if we were created to work this garden, as we are the vision that we have in the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Delight, then we should be used to toiling to get to what we need. So that's the proof that you're going to have to make some effort to get some of the things that you need done. Any questions so far? Just jump in on the chat. Jump in on Facebook. Uh, let us know. Which of you, verse number 27, are taking thought? Can you add to your stature? That's just an absolute nothing. You can't add to life. You can't add to the years of your life. You can't add to your ability to grow taller, longer. We can't do it. Who do we trust? We're trusting God to do that. And, God, and Jesus is saying, look at nature and if God created nature and God created you, won't God take care of you? Yes, God will. So, and worry, I'm telling you, it eats away at the inside of us. It's eating away. When people say they're brokenhearted, I don't think that's sometimes just a statement of phrase. I think they actually mean that there's a part that's broken and they can feel the pain in their heart. And it could be a contributed to worry. Sometimes it's grief, yes, but sometimes it's worry. Uh, so look at the nature, look at the nature. Nature is a provision, hallelujah, for the helpless. So if we are helpless in any way, God is, or, or feeling like we're helpless, God is able to provide for us. I'm gonna share my screen so that we can look at a couple of images so you don't have to look at me all the time and say that we're freed from worry. Our key verse says that as we're looking at nature, that we leave the, the, the needs of everything that we have. If we seek the Lord first, the kingdom of God, the righteousness of God, Sister Nanette read it for us, and all these things shall be added unto you. So are there, is there provision for the helpless? Yes, it is. Verse number 28 says, and just, just take no thought for the raiment. Consider the lilies of the field. They dress themselves. They make themselves beautiful. They grow. Uh, some of you, especially who have weeds in your yard, you don't know why they keep growing so fast. It's because God's in control even of the weeds, y'all. Just We have to be able to appreciate that nature is doing its thing because God is in control of its thing. Right. And that if we had these seven reasons not to worry, um, because the same God who created the lilies is in the, and, and has the ability to dress it and make it beautiful. Can't that same God be trusted with the details of your life? You see that there? Uh, that, that, and, and 29, um, uh, verse number 26, I'm sorry. Um, and if you are like the lilies of the field, do you think that if you worry about your future, that that could maybe impact your efforts for today? Don't let those things overwhelm you. It's more harmful, as what 27 says, it's harmful for us to try to control everything and then be worried or follow ourselves calling, falling into depression 
right? Because the expression is that you, we, since we can't control that, the length of our life or the physical stature, that we should give it over to God. So, so stop doing that. Stop trying to control your stature and then begin to do some things that God is not ignoring us because we depend on God. That's what 28 is saying. Don't worry about your clothing. Don't worry about it because I dress the lilies of the field. I can certainly put some clothing on you. Even now you say, well, what about the homeless elder, Lisa? I would even say that there are provisions that are available to even the homeless. I, I serve at a homeless shelter on Tuesdays. And sometimes they have so many provisions, they can't possibly take all of those and use all of those because people have been giving to them, right? And so, um, so if we know anyone who needs something, I believe that there's enough provision, even the earth, that's what 2 Timothy says, that there's enough provision that we don't have to worry about it. But notice what 29 says, that um, uh, uh, 29 is talking about Solomon and Solomon's glory. Now, what is Solomon most known for? Anybody know? wisdom that's right wisdom and he's known for wisdom and he's known for his riches uh, but he's most known for asking for riches excuse me, for wisdom rather uh, even though he had riches he still didn't ask for more riches he asked for wisdom so the glory of uh solomon's being brought up here but also his wealth as well as i believe his wisdom are impactful to us he was a wise teacher and he had gifts he was a wise teacher and he had gifts. So if we're following after God who is wise above everything, God is omniscient. God, God knows everything, isn't he? The one who knows everything and doesn't he know everything that we stand in the need of? So is it any surprise to God? And so if worrying is not good for us, it's because why? See point number five, because it shows a lack of faith and understanding of God. Because remember, if we are to do what the, what the key verse says, then the key verse said that we ought to be able to um, seek the Lord first and the kingdom and the righteousness and then everything else. What? Your clothing, your food, your shelter, everything else. But what about the everything else? I, I don't know about it. I, all I know is, is if everyone is seeking the Lord first and if everyone is doing their part, then we may not have a homeless issue. If we could get the government to seek the God that we serve first, if we could get people who have provision to seek God first, maybe we would not have persons who are hungry and lost because we're all, but, but listen, we're not going to worry. We're going to trust God. And then when we're trusting God, we're going to move in the realm that God tells us to move. What y'all thinking right now? Isn't this good to know that God is on the side of who? The righteous and that we are believing and trusting God. And we can look at nature as an example. And God is our supplier. If he can supply for nature, he's supplying for us. So now this is the question. Do you want to have that kind of small faith or do you want to have big faith? Faith is going to move a little stone pebble or faith is going to move a mountain and get it out of the way. Verse number 30 is encouraging us that we need to be able to see God do this work of clothing the field and taking care of everything that God has created. We also need to trust God and believe, uh, like verse number 31 says, just don't worry about it. Again, the, 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 repet the repetitiveness of don't worry about it is all over this particular lesson because Jesus is saying, don't worry. Do this. Don't, don't limit God. Keep trusting God and don't worry about um, these certain questions. These things are going to take care of themselves. Maybe there's some bigger things. So instead of that pebble faith, maybe God needs you to have that mountain moving faith because there's bigger things to be able to take care of, like maybe the souls that are unsaved. Maybe that's what God wants us to emphasize and be attentive to, not about what you're going to wear today or what you're going to eat today. Because you have so many options because you've been blessed. Possibly you have so many options. And even for those who have not been, uh, God is still saying, but trust me, 
Who, how are we going to get in the business of getting in the way of God building trust in people? Maybe those life circumstances are building up that very trust. And in that, we become anxious. Verse number 31 reminds us, don't be anxious. Why? Don't be anxious because God says, be anxious for nothing, but in all things by prayer and supplication. So again, it's this repetitive nature. Don't be anxious. Don't worry. Um, and it mentions the Gentiles because at the time of this particular writing, the Gentiles were not the, the chosen people who were able to get the promises of God that Jesus was coming for the Jews and then got later to, you know, to the, whoever would believe. So the Gentiles were still idolatrous, worshiping. And so when it says in verse number 32, that for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Well, we now know that we are the Gentiles, but we have faith. So they're not talking about us in verse number 32, but they're talking about the Gentiles that were worshiping false gods. Now, by the way, if you're still worshiping false gods, then yes, this is talking to you. So if you're worshiping your job, that could be a God. If you're worshiping your 401k, that could be a God. If you're worshiping your spouse because they're the provider and you don't want to leave them because, well, if I leave them, I won't. And, and, and they, well, that's a whole nother. I'm not encouraging divorce, but some people are in marriage for the wrong reason because they did not trust God. They were trusting a person and that made them a God, that made them a false God. So listen, let's wrap it up. I got two, oh, I'm doing pretty good. Replacing worry with faith. That's a novel idea. Let's replace the worry with the faith. Is there any area in our lives that we need to replace faith? Put faith in it instead of worry. Parents, faith, not worry. They're making decisions. They're grown. Lord, have mercy. That ain't what you taught them. It's not how you taught them to do it. Or maybe you didn't teach them. Maybe that you were hopeful they'd pick it up along the way and they still have fallen. Faith. I, I, I think it's not too late to repent for what we didn't do, what we didn't teach them, and then try to be the example. Seek faith over the worry for your children. Seek the God we serve for the kingdom of God and his righteousness over your children right? Make God the priority is what this lesson is saying. Uh, uh, 34a, take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow, tomorrow will take care of yourself. Now I'm super guilty. Let me go ahead and be transparent and tell you, I am super -de duper guilty of taking thought of tomorrow because I'm a planner. So, it, uh, you know, usually I'm looking at my week ahead and I'm thinking about what I need to be doing, but not to the point where I'm worried about it. And when I do start worrying about it, like, oh, this is a really rough week, Lord, cast all your care. See that? First Peter, verse number five, or, or chapter five, rather, verse number seven, I should say, cast all your care upon him. Who? Him, the Lord, for God cares for you. So even in all your planning, stop worrying and just cast all that care. And don't be fretful. You can be prepared. This is not saying don't be prepared. It's saying don't be fretful about it. Don't be overwhelmed about it. It's going to all work together. Look, stop worrying about it because people who do so fussing over the minor, excuse me, minor, smaller things. I told my family over the weekend, somebody was trying to interrupt a plan of flow. Everything was flowing well until someone came up and they were worried. Surely she must have been worried and she disturbed the whole process because of her worrying spirit. But listen, we got to be able to trust the process and stop fussing over who's next in line. You all going to get served. Who's at the front of the line? Everybody going to get your chairs and tables, ladies. Calm down. Stop fussing and have a relationship. And I don't know that individual. I don't know what kind of relationship that person had. But I'm saying that many of us are fussing over things that are trivial because God promised to take care of us. Get to know God and you'll get to know that God will take care of you. Don't worry. Because just like you parents have children, you are the child of God. And you get special privileges when you're the child of God. 
And so we already talked about the points of the common areas of worry. Well, not directly, but Jesus just said, don't worry about it. You're worried about the wrong thing. And also, if anything about the food, the clothing, the, the, the what you're going to do, all of those things, don't worry about it. God's got you if God got the birds, right? He's comparing us to nature because God created all of us. How do you overcome it? Remembering that God is in control. Remembering that you are beautifully adorned by God, just like the lilies of the field. And then finally, Matthew 6 and 30, how you can be clothed with, if you're clothed rather, like the lilies of the grass, the clothed, that's an assurance. It's a blessed assurance. I won't go through the other ones. Let's go ahead and go to our prayer. Any other questions or anything that you thought that you need to be 34b says it's sufficient supply it's a sufficient supply so don't worry god's got the promises for you so uh if you want to do that hallelujah good to see you sister lucretia happy belated birthday my girl god bless you if we are looking then for the prayer to pray together if this is it and th now this was going to take some patience because you need to be able to admit that when you've been worried before, it wasn't just concern. You were, you were downright worried. You were not sleeping at night. You were not able to eat. And that is not God's plan for our lives. Make God the priority over the trouble and God will fix it. So let's pray. Dear Father, I admit that I often forget that you are with me. I often forget what you're like. Would you please forgive me for that? I need to get to know you better. I need to get to know your word and your promises better. Help me to put you first in every area of my life. Help me to live one day at a time. Help me not to worry about tomorrow, but instead focus on what you're doing in my life right now. I want to trust in your promises to promise to take care of every one of my needs financial relational physical social spiritual and emotional help me help me to trust you more and worry less i pray in jesus name and the people of god say amen <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah our thoughts to remember is Worry empties today of its strength. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That is a quote by Corey Ten Boom, uh, born in 1892. Said, worry, you fill in the blanks. It empties your strength. Mm -hmm. It empties you from the possibility of being able to be strong enough to endure what God has in plan in store for us to endure. Uh, that's the Sunday school lesson. It's entitled Freed from Worry. It's from Matthew chapter 6. Praise the Lord, everybody. Everybody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's first Sunday. It is our Holy Communion Sunday. We're grateful to God. We bless the name of the Lord. And we sing um, the holy, holy, holy in reverence to who our God is and how great our God is. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, a song shall rise to thee, holy, holy, holy. Merciful and mighty God in three person, blessed Trinity. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God praise 
and glory hallelujah for this time that we have together come on get your mind on the wonderful opportunity we've been given to be with the lord and to be in fellowship with god what a fellowship what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms what a blessedness what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting arms come on leaning leaning come on lean leaning safe and secure from all the laws leaning anybody leaning leaning let me see you lean on facebook leaning on the everlasting arms oh how sweet to walk oh how sweet to walk in this in this pilgrim way leaning on the everlasting arms oh how bright the path oh how bright the path rose grows from day to day leaning on the everlasting arms anybody leaning leaning i'm leaning on the lord leaning safe safe and secure from all the laws anybody leaning leaning hallelujah leaning leaning on the everlasting arms hallelujah and following that Sunday school lesson, I pray we are absolutely leaning on the Lord. We've been freed from the worry. We're leaning on the Lord. He's the one who has everything in and under control. He is the one who's concerned about every one of your needs. And if you just cast all your care, I know it can be hard to do that, but it's a process to cast all your care on the Lord. For God cares for you. Don't try to get in the middle of it. Don't try to make things happen on your own you and i both know that i always work out every now and again god just wants you to trust in the lord and just let it be hallelujah so god can get the glory and nobody else can take the credit i wish i had a witness there are some some things that god will permit no one else to help us to do so that God can be glorified and magnified. Ask the girl who was on an eight-foot ladder yesterday. Only God, hallelujah, can get the glory and the honor because God is on the side of the righteous. So we're going to have our scripture reading now. It is coming from our faithful ambassador, hallelujah, Sister Nanette Morton. She will give us our scripture reading at this time. God bless you. Glory to God. Elder, did you say not to worry with the phone line? You could go ahead if you still have it up. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. So sweet. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder. And I will be reading Numbers Psalms. Psalms number 23. That's it. From the NIV. In its entirety. And the header says, a Psalm of David. Psalms number 23, verses 1 through 6. And verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. 
And verse six says, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I have read for you Psalms number 23, verses one through six. May God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Amen. And even though, <laughs> that's why I picked the NIV, Sister Nanette, that's why I picked the NIV. I know some of y'all were looking for the King James to come out, but even though, hallelujah, even though, even though you might walk through the darkest of places, even though you might walk through the pits of despair, even though you walk through, you will fear no evil, hallelujah, even though it's dark sometimes, even though you can't find your way, even though, hallelujah, God spread your prayer to table before you in the presence of your enemies and that goodness and that mercy is going to follow you. It's following some of you. Surely it's following you all the days of your life. But you got to dwell in the house of the Lord. You got to be committed to the Lord. You got to do what the Sunday school lesson says. You and I both seek the Lord, the kingdom of God and his righteousness for all these promises. They're contingent. They don't just happen and fall out of the sky when we're not doing what we're supposed to do, even though we walk through the darkest path. You don't have to be afraid. Not when you sought God, because God right there in the darkness with you. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Come on, give God the praise and the glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 We're grateful to God. When you're grateful to God, you got there should be some sign. There should be some evidence. You should be able to, what we say a couple of weeks ago, live out loud so that everybody knows your faith and not have to wonder who you serve. And I serve a true and living God. This is a good thing, hallelujah, that we do when we serve the Lord together in spirit and in truth. I'm going to do something a little differently. We're going to begin to get ourselves prepared for prayer. If anyone has any prayer requests, petitions, uh, we want to ask you that now so that we can have enough time while the announcements are going forward so that we can be prepared, hallelujah, to pray for you. Listen, saints of God, I believe in the power of prayer and the prayers of the righteous avail as much. And maybe your petition, uh, I understand, maybe it's very private and you choose not to share it uh, publicly on social media. Uh, but if you trust me, or for whatever reason you find trust in my prayer life and you want to share that prayer request with me, please do so. You can text me. You can send me an IM message or whatever that's called on Facebook uh, because I believe to stand in agreement with someone. Sometimes you have to have someone to, to believe with you to bring that thing, especially that thing that's been troubling and hard and perplexing. Uh, hallelujah. That someone's sick, you got to have someone stand with you. Hallelujah. This is a ministry. We'll do so and do that. And so if there be any prayer requests or prayers, uh, prayer requests, hallelujah. I see you, Sister uh, Lucretia. I see you, honey. I'm praying with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessing of the Lord be on you, your mind. Hallelujah. God is able. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. For your children. I know that the Lord, hallelujah, has a plan for all of your babies. Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass. Your responsibility, of course, is to show them the way to how to get to God. You keep doing that. Hallelujah. Uh, even if they act like they've fallen away when they get older, don't you worry. What, what We say, don't worry. We put them in the hands of the Lord. Take that Take that as a testament. Hallelujah. We have to put these children in the hands of the Lord and show them the way. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So in our prayer time, we're praying for our sister who's asked for prayer. We're praying for Jerusalem. And when we get to that prayer time in just a moment after the announcements, we're going to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We want God to hear us from Psalm 122, verse number six. We're praying for the peace of Jerusalem that they shall prosper and they will know that this love, hallelujah, goes forward because we pray for their protection and their peace. Glory to God for their safety and their provision. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For just for a few moments, our announcements this morning, we're so grateful again for all of you joining in with us and being a part of the worship experience. Come and share with us. Hallelujah. On a regular basis, get your word in. Uh, I'm trying to get this thing up here for you. Come worship with us in spirit and in truth and make the, the God that I'm in just introducing maybe to some of you for the first time to his son, Jesus. This might be your first time that you meet him uh, through this service. I offer Jesus to you. He is our savior and our Lord. And without Jesus, we would have no relationship with God. And so this ministry stands on that promise that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart uh, that he is the son of God, you shall be saved from your sins. Hallelujah. And then you walk as a disciple and ambassador of Jesus Christ, and you will live the life that Jesus lived, the way he lived, the things he taught, and the, the fellowship that we're in. And also, you get an opportunity to make new opportunities come to pass, because when you're living for Jesus, then all things are made new. And when you keep living for Jesus, hallelujah, you'll know that Jesus gives you opportunity and chances. And so again, we're focusing still. Yes, I know it's the sixth month of the year. And why are you still riding on the, the theme for the year? Because you got to remind yourself every time you put a, 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 a memory of the thing that you want God to do. Lord, I'm still believing in this sixth month for new opportunities. Hallelujah. Everybody believing with me? Hallelujah. Everybody believing with me? I'm believing that as I live for God, God's going to open up doors that no man can close. As I'm living for God, God's going to make things all things new. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Happy birthday to all those experiencing a June birthday uh, celebration this month. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Lean on them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. May the Lord richly bless you in this month, your birthday month, make blessings be abound in your life, good health, strength, and prosperity, and many more birthdays to come. And this is graduation season. Congratulations to all the 2021 graduates, class of 2021. One of my, my, my youngest goddaughter, Kamira, just graduated from the eighth grade. God bless you. Happy graduation, Kamira. Saray Lee, God bless you. And all those who are graduating, I've got some other young people I'll be celebrating next Sunday. The One of those Turners and the Watsons are graduating, the, uh, the Waltons rather, I'm sorry, are graduating. We're grateful for them. Give God play, praise and glory for all those graduating and for all those of you who may have graduates on uh online god bless those graduates as well uh thank god for uh, our giving and those, those of you who have supported the ministry this past week we received your gifts god bless you and thank you for sowing in to the kingdom of god the work of the ministry yes ministry cost uh, and those who are sowing we believe are sowing in good ground because we value the word of the lord and the price that jesus paid for us uh, we're trying to spread that word abroad to bring others into the family of faith. So you could do so online at Ephesians320ministries.org or on our Givelify app. Thank you for those uh, who used Givelify this past week. The Givelify app, look for our waving, praising hands and my photo and you'll be on the right page for Ephesians 320 Ministries. Or if you prefer to use Cash App, it is the dollar sign Ephesians 320 and you can use Cash App for your giving. Or if you prefer our PO box, it's there on the screen. It's 30, I'm sorry, 372103 in St. Louis here as our home base, 63138. But what I love about the Lord, who's on our side, that every time someone taps into Facebook or YouTube, y'all, they get the word wherever they are. We have people who reach to, out to us from Kenya, from Nigeria, from India, hallelujah. So we are able to reach out and speak to those ministries. Please join us, if you will, on Tuesday morning at 525. We give God praise and glory for the faith and healing prayer line every Tuesday at 525, as the Lord permits us, that's central daylight time. Uh, and we, we go to the Lord at the throne of grace as we're going to do just now in prayer. We are uh, reaching our 11th year in the faith and healing prayer line and we are as faithful, hallelujah, as the Lord has permitted us to be. Uh, so we go into the presence of the Lord with our petitions. Uh, those of you who are 
uh, joining in with us. We're praying for those at the Pillars of North County Nursing Home, all of our beloved residents. We miss them so. Uh, my sister prayed for us on Saturday on the Believers Call because she knows how hard it's been from my heart. I've missed them so. And we look forward to getting back, <clears throat> excuse me, to ministering to them in live in person. And so we've seen a little medley <clears throat> before we go into prayer. Help me, Lord. Our Father, you are holy <clears throat> and we give you glory and we bless <clears throat> your name, our Father. Ha! You are holy. And we give you glory and we bless your name, our Father. Hallelujah. You are holy and we give you glory and we bless. One more time. Your name, our Father. You are holy, and we give you glory, and we bless your name. Jesus taught the disciples to pray ye this way, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive our trespassers and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Yes, God, we thank you, Lord. We honor you on today. We bless your name. We thank you for the opportunity to come before your presence directly that we don't have to wait for anyone else. We can come uh, on our own bended knee. We can come well, on our own laid out prostrate. We can come seated here in our chairs with our hearts turned to you, with our minds on you, with our, uh, our ability and emotions thinking and believing in all things are possible with you. We heard it in the Sunday school lesson, God, we're not going to worry about anything. We're just going to cast all of our cares over you. We're going to seek you first in the kingdom and righteousness and everything else will be added. And so God, we're asking on behalf of those who might just need someone to stand in the gap with them on today. Lord, I'm believing for Sister Jones and when she stands oh God asking for prayer for herself and prayer for her children and prayer for her mind oh God that you will help her to be transformed by the renewing of her mind you'll renew her mind on the promises of you you'll renew her mind on the goodness of you on the grace of you you'll remind her oh God that if she seek you first and your kingdom everything else will be added if she can uh, lay aside every weight oh God that you will restore her strength you'll give her the peace of mind that will surpass all understanding. It's not the bank account that gives us peace. It's you. It's not the friends around us that gives us peace. It's you. Lord, so I thank you and I praise you that everything pertaining to her children is blessed. Every provision is provided. Every need is met. We're calling it all into order. That their safety is in your hands. That your promises are in your hands, oh God. And that every good and perfect gift that you have for them is being bestowed upon them. You're prepared preparing them for victory. You're preparing them for great success. Give them a mind, oh God, to be able to embrace it, to walk with you, the strength and the courage to walk away from the world's image of success and walk in your will. That's greater success. We believe it, we receive it. Lord, for those who are sick today, those who are hurting in their bodies, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, kidney failure, Lord, we're coming against all the infirmity and the affliction and we're pleading the blood of Jesus for righteousness sake. You said for your name's sake, you believe that the glory, if we believe for the glory, the glory shall prevail. So everybody in the nursing home, let your glory prevail. Everybody in prison, oh God, let your glory prevail. Everybody in the hospital, your glory prevail. Lord, we're looking for the miracles. 
signs, wonders. Bring them out of their sick bed of affliction. Bring them out of their sick bed of affliction, oh God, is our prayer and our belief and our plea, oh God. Bring people into safety, your loving arms of safety. It's our prayer for Jerusalem, the peace of Jerusalem for the people of Israel. They'll be safe, oh God. Keep them from any attack of the enemy. Let there be, oh God, one mind and one assurance that you are God, your son Jesus is our Lord. And if we believe, oh God, that you can do it, your hands stretch out over Israel, your hands stretch out in Jerusalem. Lord, we thank you and we honor you. Peace, hallelujah, not only in Jerusalem, peace in every household watching, peace in every neighborhood we represent, peace, no more violence, no more wickedry. I read the message this morning, oh God, that there was another person killed in the name of Jesus. We bind up the demon of violence. We bind up the demons of murder and suicide spirit. We call them in the order. We call them and cast them into the pit of hell. That's where they came from, God. That's where we're commanding them to go back. And Lord, we're believing that you will lose love and joy. You'll lose understanding and liberty. You'll lose us to not be arrogant, prideful. Lord, you'll give us the humility so we can be able to reason with one another and come in a conversation with one another about the matter. It's in the name and by the blood of Jesus that, Lord, we are here and whatever the needs are of your people, there they are, God. You take care of it. You You've been doing it since the beginning of time. And Lord, we're not going to worry about it. We're going to cast it over. Every crisis, we're going to cast it over. Every, oh God, issue in government, we're going to cast it over to you. It's all in your care. It's all under your provision. We simply are calling it as we ask you to do it. Lord, we're calling it into order because you said if we decree a thing, you'll establish it. So uh, we decree and no weapon formed against us. It won't prosper. It won't work. Every device that tries to trip us up, make us get all emotionally wrecked. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let this mind be in you. Yes, oh God, that's also. In Christ Jesus, let this mind be in you on one accord with your spirit so that we can, oh God, be free. Because when the sun sets free, God is free indeed. So don't let anything rob us or steal us from our freedom. Don't let it rob our minds from it, steal our minds sake from the freedom, God, because we're free. Praise the Lord, God, we're free. And we thank you even today that eyes have not seen nor ears have not yet heard nor entered into the heart which you have yet yet in store for us, so God, to do the exceeding, the abundantly above all that we could ever ask, hope, or think according to the power that works within us, signs and wonders, miracles you're able to perform. We believe you're going to raise up somebody today from their sick blood of affliction. We believe somebody today is going to get their deliverance. We believe marriages today are coming together and in order. It's in Jesus' name and our children's sake that they see healthy marriages. In the name of Jesus, we're believing for the next generation to come, that they will serve and honor you. Lord, grandchildren serving you, great-grandchildren loving you. We're calling it now, God, because we have faith in you. And all of these blessings we ask, we celebrate it like it's already done. It's in your son Jesus' name, God, that we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, God, we declare it all to be so. And the people of God who believe God say amen and go ahead and celebrate God and give God the praise, hallelujah, for hearing the hallelujah shata of the heart's petitions of his people. Give God the praise for doing what you believe God can do. It's exceeding your expectations. God can do. He can do the great, the marvelous. Hallelujah. He's a lover of your soul. Hallelujah. And he's able to do it like nobody else can do it. Hallelujah. Turn your Bibles, if you will, with me to Matthew's gospel, the gospel of St. Matthew, the 11th chapter of St. Matthew. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My soul ah, loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. 
my soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. Matthew 11, verse number 28. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. He is a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. My soul, hallelujah, loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. My soul loves Jesus. Bless his name. He is a wonder in my soul. He in my soul he is a wonder in my soul bless his name matthew 11 hallelujah bless his name he's a wonder yes god hey hallelujah in my soul he's a wonder is he a wonder in my soul he's a wonder in my soul bless bless his name verse number 28 matthew 11 come to me all who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart i'm in the niv and you will find rest. Anybody need to find rest uh, for your soul? Hallelujah. Find rest for your soul. For my yoke, verse number 30, is easy and my burden is light. Hallelujah. Matthew's gospel, chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, shares with us Jesus' perspective. It's in red. That lets us know that Jesus is speaking to those of us who are weary. Uh, and maybe you're not weary today. Uh, praise God if you're not weary today. But this, this is why we have messages, saints of God, that might not necessarily feel like it's for you. But it might be for you in reserve. So, so maybe you're not weary today. Praise the Lord. But if you know somebody who's weary, put it in reserve for them. Or maybe if it's not for you today, man, wherever your line of life takes you, maybe you might need this word and you can come back in the archives. Ah, hallelujah. You can pull up this message about weary souls and what to do when you find yourself weary. And just for a few moments, tell your neighbor, Elder Lisa. It's going to talk about response in a crisis. Response in a crisis. I would, I would submit to you that being weary is a crisis. I would submit to you that those of us who are believers, the born again saints of God, if we are weary, if we're the ones who are following after Jesus the Christ and we're weary, imagine what the world might be experiencing because they don't even have Jesus. They don't have the author and the finisher of their faith. So imagine why that might be then when you look at the news report and they are many uh, that there are people who are losing their minds because they're weary of mind. They don't have a savior, a Lord, a king. Oh, you look at the news reports and always uh, someone finding a, a headline and someone else has uh, lost their life due to a uh, police force and brutality. Uh, the, the header that I read this morning, it said protest erupts again. Yes, over man killed by the Minnesota deputy Listen, saints of God, the headline.
lives will show you that there is crisis in the land. And I don't believe that this message is redundant. Yes, maybe you have heard messages before about what you do, what you need to do rather in response to a crisis. But sometimes you need to be refreshed. So tell your neighbor, whoever's in the house with you, if you're by yourself, high five your neighbor and say, I know how to respond in a crisis. And if I don't know how to respond, I'm about to find out. Hallelujah, somebody. Because we need to know how to respond and what our response is in a crisis. Because whether you are in it for yourself personally or you are reading it in the world is happening, we have a responsibility to know what to do. And yes, 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 Christ is saying there's a couple of things that Jesus himself has said to you that I'm going to give you so that you won't have to worry about the crisis. I won't be before you long. We got to get ready for the, tuple, the table of suffering. And that's why it's good for us to talk about the response in a crisis because some of us don't know that when you said yes to Jesus, you accepted the responsibility of some of the suffering like Jesus experienced. I don't know if that's going to bust your bubble. You might want to hold on to your chair. But when you said yes to Jesus, it was saying that you were going to be yoked to the things that Jesus would have you to be yoked to so that God can use that to show others that you don't serve just some sad, sad, pitiful God. You serve the one, the true, the only living God. And that if you have to suffer, you're not suffering alone. If you have to face a crisis, you're not facing a crisis alone. We heard it last Sunday uh, in the uh, the uh, Grateful for Grace service. We read that, the, that last Sunday about being mindful of those things. And so all Jesus is saying to us in these scriptures of Matthew's gospel chapter 11 is letting us know, first of all, that Christ has given us a gift. That's my first point. It's a gift from Christ. So if you feeling as if you have burden that's on you. He's saying, I gave you the gift of peace. And if you're carrying the peace, uh, excuse me, the burden, instead of giving the peace, opening up the peace gift, if you are weary and I'm giving you rest and you're not sleeping at night and you got the burdens on your mind, that's on you because you didn't give it to me. I give you the, uh, the peace of rest. It's a gift from God. It's the gift that restores us. It's about seven different verses in the uh, Old Testament talking about how rest is sweet. And if you don't rest well, then everything else gets messed up. You don't believe me? Ask somebody who's sleep deprived. Their attitude is quick to go off. Ask somebody who's sleep deprived, working long hours at shifts, working double shifts. They sleep deprived. Don't ask them nothing because their temper's going to be flame on fire because they sleep because rest is needful and the burdens Jesus is saying don't take the burdens because he's a burden bearer somebody put that in your notes Jesus is a burden bearer he's a heavy load sharer and he says it's a gift I'm carrying this burden for you it's a gift you don't have to worry about what's happening in your life your children's life I'm carrying it for you it's a gift give it to me I'll bear it give it to me Jesus said I'll share it if I sang it earlier, if it's a need in your life, I'll take it if you only give it to Jesus. It's a gift. Our first point says Christ's gift is that he'll give you rest while you were in it. God will give you rest. Hallelujah. While you're in the storms of life and while they may try to take over and rage over Jesus, said, I'll give you rest. While you're thinking about going into work, some of us, I don't know about you, but it used to be about five o'clock every Sunday night. I would get this overwhelming feeling of despair. It would just come over me. For those of you who work traditional Monday through Friday kind of schedules, that Sunday night despair, it would just try to, it was a burden, y'all, because we were just looking for, I, I don't know, maybe it's one or two of you, but you at five o'clock, you would just start thinking about, oh, Monday is coming. So quickly, it would come so fast. The whole week, it was like a blur. And Jesus is saying, but it's a burden and I'll take it. So at five o'clock, Lisa, if you know it's like, 
clockwork, then five o'clock, give it to me. If you know it's like clockwork, then at five o'clock, make a notation. At five o'clock, go into prayer. See, that's a strategy, saints. I just gave you a nugget that if you know the thing happens at the same time, all the time, if you always go into depression at the same time, every sin, then go to God and say, well, Lord, you know it's approaching. And I'm going to give it to you, this burden. You know how I've been feeling, Lord. You know how it makes me feel. And I know you want to give me rest. And it's, listen, say to God, so Christ is offering you the gift of rest. That's why Sunday is so important for us believers or any day that you call your Sabbath, that is. So for others who are watching this and your Sabbath day is Saturday, that's fine. God bless you. Whatever day is the Lord's day for you and you say that's the day you're going to have divine rest. Because rest is good for us to reflect on the things that God has said for us. And so not only is that God, Jesus is saying, come to me, come to me, come to me. And some of us, let me just pause for the cause and say, you've gone to everybody else beside Jesus. And so therefore, this whole response in a crisis is problematic for you because the first reaction you have is to put it on Facebook. Your first reaction to your crisis is to put it on the IG. Your first reaction to your crisis is to go and tell somebody at your workplace. Your first response to you, and Jesus is saying, come to me. Come to me first. Come to me before you go to them. Matter of fact, stop going to them because they're tired of hearing about your troubles and your woes anyway. Because some of you don't come to us unless you got trouble. You don't come to us when things are good. You only come when stuff is all raggedy and messed up. And can I tell you something? I'd like to hear from you every now and again when everything is going well. I wish I had. A witness today, y'all may not have any people like that in your circle who only come to when stuff messed up. But some of us only hear from you when it's all you down to the ninth hour or you down to the last dime. And now I hear from you. What about last week when you were on the high mountain? Can I hear from you then? Maybe that's what also God is saying. Maybe God is only uh, stretching you so you won't only talk to God when you're at your lowest point. Help me, Holy Ghost. But maybe God wants to hear a thanksgiving in your heart when you're on the mountaintop. Maybe God wants to hear, Lord, what can I do for you? Because everything's good for me today. What can I be doing for you? Everything is well for Maybe God wants to hear from you. Hey, God. Hmm. Wow. You come to Jesus. He said, I'll give you a gift of rest. And then not only does God give us gifts, saints of God, that's your first point, Christ's gifts. Your second point for those note takers who are believers or amongst us is God is saying Jesus has an example. So not only do we have Christ's gift of rest when you come to him, but we also have Christ's example. He says it here. He says it. He says, I got a yoke. Take it, verse number 29. I got this yoke and learn from me. Learn from my example. Learn by what I do. Learn by what I said. When the enemy came against me, what did I tell the enemy? Get behind me, Satan. You don't have any hold, but it is written that man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You got an example of Jesus saying, be the example I've made for you. Isn't that good? Isn't it good? High five yourself and say, that's good. That's good. That's good. It's good to have an example. Jesus is saying, I'm the best example you need. Jesus is saying, stop comparing yourself to all those other people. Stop comparing yourself to those supermodels on the social media. All that stuff is staged anyway. So you have a little extra roll here and an extra wrinkle here. Stop making yourself worry about what they look like and compare yourself. I wish I had somebody who would just say, ouch, because they compare themselves with so many other people. I wish I had her shape. I wish I had her hair. I wish I had his muscles. I wish I had his car. I wish I had his wife. And God said, covet not nobody. Don't give covetness any thought and get Christ as your example. I wish. He said, Jesus said, I am the example for you to follow. I'm the way 
and the truth that you should be following and take this listen he says take my yoke so he's saying it's a responsibility when you're gonna be like jesus you just can't decide today to be like jesus and then tomorrow to be like your old self it's got to be a commitment for the example you know why maybe some of our children are going back and forth because they've seen us go back and forth. They've seen us go here and there. They've seen us be inconsistent. They've seen us speak about the goodness of the Lord one minute and then cuss out the postman clear out of the order. And they don't know what to think because we've been inconsistent. Jesus is saying, I'm consistent. And I'm faithful. And if you take my example, Christ's example, you take Christ's example. He says, you will not only have rest as my gift, but then you'll know that there is a responsibility. That's what the yoke is. And you're yoked to Jesus. And so you can't just act any old kind of way. We have to act like Jesus. What would you, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Come on, somebody. I'll stop putting the hearts in the comments. Then you, you stop putting the hearts in the comments because some of this is just simply self-reflection and we don't want to always follow. The example, he says, because uh, not only he said, I'm the example, but he says, I am, praise the Lord for the witness, gentle and humble. Ah, so, so, so at five o'clock, if your despair comes over because the work week is approaching and you get to that workplace, be gentle. Be gentle with your colleagues. Be gentle. Be gentle with the customer service experience. Be gentle. Be gentle if you are in that industry because sometimes, y'all, the customer service industry does not look like for being gentle. Everybody's being harsh. Be gentle with your boss. Be gentle on the roadways. That's why we have so much rage today because people aren't just being gentle. Be gentle and be humble. He says, because that's the example of Jesus. Be humble. So what does that mean? That means put somebody before you. Oh, my. Oh, my. That means let the people merge in before you on the roadway. We all going to get there, I promise. Let them go ahead and get in the line. Yeah, they have it all. Go ahead. We all going to get our service. Let somebody see the spirit of gentleness and humility because we are the example of Christ. It's good. Is it good to you? Is it good? Because the Lord wants to give you rest. And some of us, the reason why, oh God, thank you, Holy Ghost. But some of the reason why we can't rest is because we've been so full of hell that we can't rest because our spirit is just turmoiled because we've not exhibited the gentleness and the humility of God. So Christ gave you the gift of rest if you come to him. And Christ is saying, watch my example. If you follow after me and yoke to me, be gentle, be humble. And then my last point, my last point is that not only do you get physical rest, huh? You'll find rest for your soul. So your, your example of the gift is that physical rest, but you're also going to get some rest. I wish I had some help for your soul. And so some of us, when we wonder about our soul, I sing it to you earlier that if my soul loves Jesus. If my soul loves Jesus, then I bless his name. And what is my soul? My soul is my mind my will and my emotions. Uh, yeah, I made, a I, I made a distinction. My mind, what is happening in my mind, what I'm thinking about, what I'm meditating on, my will, how am I going to forsake my desire and let God take control? How am I going to forsake what I want to do, what my priority is, and let God prioritize my day? How am I going to let my will be not my will, Lord, but let your will be done? Your kingdom come in the earth. So the spiritual rest, hallelujah, is for your mind, your will, and then your emotions. Because we, we won't get we won't get ourselves, uh, I don't know, uh, all uh, bunched up. <laughs> uh, because when people don't do what we ask them to do, you won't get your emotions all bunched up. When we have asked them, to, will you please take out the trash? And it's still over there smelling. And because you're emotional about it, because you're emotional about it, now this trash issue is causing some of us to stop talking to our mates, some of us to stop talking to our children. Because we're so emotional about the trash. The trash has now caused a divide. With our emotions, saints, Jesus is saying, let me be the example 
of your emotions. I give you rest so that you can have your emotions to be in alignment with your will and your mind. I'm grateful today and I'm done, I'm done. I just wanted to give you a, a, the response of inner crisis because thanks to God, uh, I told you earlier that while protests are erupting all over the land about injustices, I'm all for the protests, I'm not for the riots. I'm all for uh, having my signs up and blame, um, and saying my hymns and saying my songs and saying what we will not stand for, but we should not be about the destruction and the devastation. And I know my scholars at those progressive church, uh, schools will say, oh, no, 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 go ahead, tell them to go ahead, have it. No, no, I believe that God is saying that my protest has more power because my response in a crisis has got to look like Jesus' example. Jesus. All I got is what scripture says. And Jesus' example says, I can stand for righteousness for his name's sake. Jesus says to respond in a crisis is to make sure I got my mind right. I got my will right. I wish I had a help today. I got my emotions right. So any crisis you might be facing, you can respond accordingly, knowing that Jesus has given you the example. If you need any evidence of that example, I told you earlier, he said, don't be anxious for nothing. Philippians 4, hallelujah. Verse number 6, don't be anxious. Don't be worried. How to respond? Get your rest. How to respond? Say the example of Christ. How to respond? Get that yoke up to Jesus and be humble. Hallelujah. And be courageous and be faithful. How do you respond? Everything in prayer and supplication unto God. Anybody going to pray today? We going to pray until the walls of oppression, until the walls of destruction, until the walls of despair, until the walls of racism come tumbling down. We're going to respond in that crisis in the best way we know, like Jesus will respond. First, he would pray and he would ask for direction. He always was found. My response in a crisis is that I will do what 1 Corinthians, put it in your notes, read it later. Chapter 10, verse number 13 says, no temptation has overtaken you. It's common to man. So the response in a crisis, if you've been tempted, it's not common. It's not uncommon. Somebody else has faced it because God says I'm faithful. And if you be faithful to God, he'll help you to be faithful over the temptation. How do you respond? In a crisis, we're in a drug crisis. How do I respond, Elder Lisa? In a drug crisis, don't be a part of the temptation. Don't fall prey to temptation. Don't give in to the temptation. But look to God who say if you be tempted, he'll give you ability for you to escape. Maybe it's not drugs. Maybe it's alcohol. Maybe it's not alcohol. Maybe it's women. Maybe it's not women. Maybe it's men. Whatever your temptation is, maybe it's gambling, maybe it's lying, maybe it's cheating, maybe it's manipulation. Look to Jesus and his example, and he will show you to strengthen your heart. Everybody else might be doing it, but that don't mean you have to. And all it means... If you're going to respond in a crisis, you're going to have to respond like Jesus and his example. And so finally, if you, oh God, hallelujah, give us the strength. And if we, oh God, find ourselves in a predicament. Uh, like Hebrews 2 and 18, for because he himself has suffered when tempted, he's able to help those who are being tempted. And so our response in a crisis, when you want to get angry and you want to cuss them out, your response in a crisis is that God is able to help me. Somebody say, help me, help me, help me, Lord, help me to respond like you were respond in a crisis because my soul loves you, Jesus. I want to respond like Jesus. If they come and get me and try to arrest me, let me respond like Jesus. I'll go willingly. If 
they try to do anything against me, I'll go humbly. If they try to talk about me, I won't cuss them back out. I'll just let them talk. I'm going to give it over to the Lord. How do you respond in a crisis? But you don't understand. They keep picking on me. Respond like Jesus. They kept picking on him too. They took him from judgment hall. To judgment hall. They took him from courtroom to a courtroom. They whipped him all night long. And what did Jesus say? Nothing. What did Jesus do? Nothing. He didn't resist. He kept on going. Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith is an example. You need an example on how to respond in a crisis. We have an example. It's in Jesus. So before you respond, ask Jesus what he would do. Before you respond, before you go, ask Jesus, would you go? Before you move, ask Jesus, would you do this or that? Because we're going to follow after the Christ gift. We're going to seek after Christ's example, and we're going to attribute it to Christ's humility so that we could have the spiritual rest. My response in a crisis, sum it up, Elder, it's in Jesus. When you have a crisis, it's in Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. You don't have to be anxious. Just wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Hear the word of the Lord. Be strengthened in your heart. While you're waiting, hallelujah, in the crisis to end, give God the praise. Because you've got rest. You've been given the rest. Give God the glory. You, you buy, you're fine now. You've got the rest you need. Give God, hallelujah, all of. Come on, saints. That's your cue. Give God the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. For getting you out, seeing you through, helping you to know how to respond in advance of the crisis. You already got the instruction. You in the crisis? This is the instruction. You came out of the crisis? This is what you could have done, but that's all right. You better now. You're stronger now. You're equipped now. You know now. You have the evidence now. Now is how you respond. Mm. You're going to respond. You're going to respond. Hallelujah. With the word of God. Hallelujah. On the promises of God. Like the example of Jesus. Jesus the Christ. That suffering at that table that I told you about. It doesn't last. It's only for a season. And so you're coming out of that. Jesus came out of his suffering. It lasted only for a season. We're coming out of our suffering. It won't last always. Come on, give God the praise and the glory and the honor. But if you don't know Jesus, and if you don't have Jesus as your friend, who will stick closer to you than any brother. If you don't know Jesus, well, you can come to him in the, in the wee of the midnight hour and ask Jesus what Jesus would do. Hallelujah. What the example of Jesus is. He said, be gentle. You don't know how to be gentle because you haven't given yourself to Jesus. We offer him to you today. Or if you're in Jesus and you don't know how to be gentle, we re-offer him to you today. Re-establish that relationship with Jesus the Christ, so that you can be gentle and humble in heart, not still holding a grudge, not still being all bent, uh, bent up out of shape by what they've done and said to you. Be gentle and humble of heart like Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, we offer him to you today. Or if you need to reconnect to Jesus, we offer that relationship. Come back to him. He loves you. He's missed you. He wants you back. You are his people. People. He died for you, hung on the cross from the sixth to the ninth hour, gave up the ghost for you and I to be saved, set free, liberated, born again, made new. Anybody been made new today? I thank God for being made new and all things that were old have passed away. But if you need that extinction of that relationship, we extend him to you. Come unto Jesus. Hallelujah. While you have time, come unto 
Jesus, make up your mind of how to respond in a crisis. He will make your life brand new, for he will take care of you. Come to Jesus while you have time. And so as you come to Jesus and you repent from your sin and give over to your Savior and Lord, Jesus' example will indeed teach you how teach you when, teach you where. Jesus' example will lead you because he sent the Holy Spirit that will lead you and guide you. And when you've accepted Jesus Christ, you've been given the gift. So not only the gift of rest, but also the gift of the Spirit. Hallelujah. That will teach you, guide you, remind you, show you. But you need to be connected to a ministry, a church that will show you to the Word of God, teach you that. You can do that with Ephesians 3.20 ministries. You could do that with your local church assembly one that you are comfortable with but do that don't stay home do or if you get of your home get online and seek after the word and seek after the will don't forsake being connected to the word of god get in it hallelujah and again we're not just trying to build a, a number of, of, of attendees we're trying to get the souls of people saved lives changed hearts revived so we pray something has been said today that would touch your heart renew your mind and revive your righteous spirit within you you were created to know how to respond in a crisis because you've been created to follow jesus so give on up your ways of this world and follow after jesus now we've made ourselves uh prepared cleansed our hands and we are getting our minds together for the table, the table of sacrifice. Because again, we don't just come into Jesus so we can just sit back and not experience some of the things that Jesus had to endure because of righteousness sake. Because if you stand for Jesus, you're going to have to stand sometimes by yourself. Maybe sometimes you'll have to stand in opposition of the unbeliever who wants to do things in an unbelieving way. But Jesus said that I've given you the example. I'm the witness, he said. Follow after me and, tell, and, and, and learn of me. Huh? He said, learn of me. And so when we, what did we learn um, at the table when he talked to the disciples? He said, remind the people that as often as they do this, take of the bread and drink of the wine, that they remember me. We, we have to wake up thinking about Jesus, go to bed thinking about Jesus, go to work thinking about Jesus, ride your car thinking about Jesus, eat your meal. All the time our minds and hearts, because everything we do is because Jesus has given us this relationship back to God. And God now sees Jesus' blood and doesn't even see our frailties, our shortcomings. Jesus, the one who suffered so that we could live, said to the disciples, Tell them about my suffering, but tell them how to handle it. Tell them how to respond to it, but tell them that they're yoked to me and that because they're yoked to me, I'm carrying some of them and I'm with them through it, but I'll give them rest. If they remain gentle and humble, if they remain meek, if they remain faithful. Anybody going to remain faithful this week? You, 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 know, you don't know what's going to happen this week, but if you just make the commitment to remain faithful, that's what this table it's representing. It's not just some fashion thing we're doing. It's not just because. It's because we are deeply reflecting on our faithfulness to God in all of our ways, in all of our relationships, and in all of our methods. And so Jesus took the bread and he blessed it. And he gave thanks to God. And he prayed. And we're going to have a word of prayer because we want to change this from carnal to spiritual and allow this to be uh, the, 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 uh, the, the acceptance of the sacrifice. Jesus Christ, the savior of the world, hung, bled, and died so that we could live. And his body was beaten all night long, all day long. And they put him on a cross and he pierced him in the side and out came blood and water, blood for the remission of the sin and water for our baptism. Jesus went to the grave, got up 
after three days in the grave and alive and well and believes that we're doing all of these things because we have faith. So let's pray. Gracious, holy God, our Father, we do have faith. We believe in Jesus, the author, the finisher. We believe the one who gave his life and the suffering of the table. We thank you even now, God, that you are with us and you, you are with us always and even to the end of the world. And that we do this because we believe you. We trust you. We stand on your word. We're asking you to change it from carnal to spiritual and allow it to be the body and the blood of Jesus the Christ. No longer bread and juice, but the suffering of the example of our Lord and our Savior. We bless you. We honor you. And we ask that you forgive us for anything we may have said or done, contrary to your will, contrary to your way. It's in Jesus' name. We ask for purity of heart and mind and spirit and the people of God who believe God. Say amen. This is the body of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, take, eat all of it. And this they did, and they all did eat. This is the blood of Jesus Christ shed for the remissions of our sins who brings us back into rightful relationship with the Father. He took the cup, he blessed it, gave thanks to God. He told the disciples, take and drink from this cup, the cup of the new covenant that gives you everlasting life. And they all did drink. And after that, they sang a hymn. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross, and I know it was the blood for me. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again for me. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. God bless you. God keep you. Ambassadors, thank you again so much for everything you have done. Your faithfulness. Our legacy ambassador, Sister Hubbard, is with us today. We give God praise and glory and honor for her. Our current ambassador, Sister Nanette, thank you again for always being so dutiful and so faithful. For all of you on Facebook who joined us, God bless you. Good to have all of you, Sister Sherry, Brother Ralph. Hallelujah. Sister Lucretia, we thank God for you. Praise God for you. May the blessings of the Lord, hallelujah, make you rich and no sorrow. Until we meet next time, hallelujah, we're grateful to God. We will be back next week uh, with uh, our Sunday school extended adult version. Hallelujah. For those who are able to be with us at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, we're grateful to God. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There's nothing else. Nothing else. I haven't forgotten anything. Join us on Tuesday morning for the Faith and Healing Prayer line at 525 a.m. Hallelujah. God bless y'all. Y'all just are so sweet. I'm just overjoyed. I'm overwhelmed because the blood still works, y'all. I believe if we have a response in crisis, you have Nothing else you can do. Just plead that blood's power. Hallelujah. If you can't think of doing anything else, just call on that blood, the blood of Jesus, and it will work. Hallelujah for you. And it'll get you in the mindset of knowing who God is and the power of Jesus, the Christ. Response in a crisis through the eyes of Jesus. God bless you. And let's pray. Gracious, holy God, our Father, we thank you and praise you for what our hearts and minds have received and heard and felt, oh God. We pray, Lord, that it was an experience for somebody. Somebody has been touched today. Somebody's heart's been renewed. Someone's soul has been revived. We pray, oh God, for a commitment to you and the response in a crisis. We're going to do it. We're going to do what Jesus said by the gifts, by the example, hallelujah, and by the humility. We honor you and by the spirit rest. We thank you that our mind is right. Our soul is right. Hallelujah. Our emotions are right. And everything is in order. And so now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To our only great God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide henceforth in you now and forevermore. And the people of God who believe God 
Say amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Love y'all so much. Hallelujah. God is sweet. Hallelujah. You can make it. Yes, oh God. I feel you. I feel you. You're encouraged right now. You can make it. God bless you all. I don't care what's going wrong. God won't let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. Oh, you can make it. God bless you. You can make it.